Hello everyone, uh, Stepan here. Uh, today I'll finish the series on the Sicilian defense uh, with the last video uh, on the Moscow defense, on the Moscow variation, I'm sorry. And it's been more than 20 videos, it's been a very long series. It took a long time, but yeah, now, now it's complete. You can find uh, all the variations in the playlist on the Sicilian uh, defense theory. And the last video, as I said, is on the Moscow variation or the Canal Sokolsky uh, variation of the Sicilian, the Canal Sokolsky attack, which is, I've saved it, saved it for last because it's probably the most popular anti Sicilian. And uh, as an E4 player, I like those types of positions, so I wanted to, to save the Moscow for last. Uh, it's a very nice way to avoid the mainline theory in the Sicilian defense. If you don't have too much time to study uh, theory and opening moves, and if you want to find a quick weapon against the Sicilian, then uh, the Moscow is a great choice because you avoid the Nidorf, you avoid the Dragon, you avoid many mainline uh, highly theoretical variations. Uh, so let's go into the opening. E4, C5, the Sicilian defense, knight to F3, D6, and now you don't play D4, which you would play against, you don't go into the open Sicilian with pawn to D4 and allow the trade, you play bishop to B5 check, this is the Moscow variation or the Canal Sokolsky attack, and you're, uh, well, you're avoiding a lot of theory and you are immediately putting pressure at black's position, and what's also important, you are in some positions going to trade your light squared bishop, which can be trapped especially in Maroxy bind setups. So black has to react. There are three moves. I'm not going to talk about queen to d7 uh, because that loses the queen. You can cover either with the knight or with the bishop. And uh, bishop to d7 is the most popular way to, to block and uh, knight to c6 and knight to d7 are the second and third most popular. We're going to go over knight to c6 first. And uh, knight to c6 of course does allow white to capture immediately and to double black pawns, but once black captures with the B pawn, he's going to have uh, virtually an extra pawn in the center, because if black manages to get d5 in, then the B pawn is going to be able to recapture if e takes d5, c takes d5. So yeah, uh, it's actually not as uns unsound, and black does win the bishop pair that way, and it's it's a perfectly okay idea. Now, uh, black, uh, white doesn't have to capture, of course, white has several options. White can either push through in the center, castle, or take. Let's go over takes first, because I think that's the least common move. So bishop takes c6, of course, black has to recapture, b takes, and now white castles. And here, uh, there is one really good move for black which i would recommend you always play and that's the move e5 which sort of creates a bind on the center sort of uh, a maroxy bind in reverse in reverse uh with the addition of these two pawns so solidifying the center even more and i really like this this setup for black even though black is behind in development you can see of course that white is up uh four points in development actually and black has a strong center i think black has more than enough compensation according to the engines the position is equal now once black has created his formidable center white has to break through it and white plays c3 this is the only move to prepare the move d4 and now uh, black has two options once again one slightly less aggressive and one very aggressive uh, you can either play f5 or knight to f6 i would recommend the move f5 because that simply uh, prevents white from activating his his central pawns and gains even more initiative and even more even more time so e takes f5 bishop takes f5 d4 c takes d4 c takes d4 e4 and uh, I like this position for black because if uh, black manages to play d5 then it's going to be really hard for white to play in the center but uh, it's still theory and white is perfectly fine white can play queen to c2 putting pressure on the c6 pawn uh, this knight can't be taken because queen takes bishop and white is going to be slightly better rook to c8 and knight to g5 and in this position, black is supposed to be slightly better even, but uh, it's fine for, for white. And as I said, this is the best way for black to play, I believe, after bishop takes e6. So after bishop takes e6, b takes castles, e5, c3, 
play f5. Don't wait uh, for white to react in the center, don't give white time, just play f5, open up the position. Uh, you are undeveloped, so it might be risky, but it's risky anyway, you are too much, too far behind in development, and f5 cramps down white's position even further. So e5, bishop f5, d4, which is the best move for white, cd4, cd4, e4, and black has uh, a great position. Now the second option after c3, uh, instead of f5, is to play knight to f6, which is... I think better for white, but it might be sounder for black because you actually develop a piece. Here white continues with rook e1, uh, bishop to g4, h3 chasing the bishop away, you don't take, you play bishop to h5, d4, that's why you played c3, c takes, c takes, and as black you have to remember, whenever white plays d4 you take it with the c pawn, there's basically no positions in which uh, it's not good to take. Uh, here there are two options, uh, knight to d7 is the best move, e takes d4 is actually a bad move, and knight to d7, bishop to e3, bishop e7, knight b to d2 is how the variation continues. And if black uh, gets tempted to take the d-pawn, then white is, uh, well, for, for a grandmaster this is winning, this is almost plus two, uh, for a normal person it should be winning anyway. So e takes d4, and the point is, you, you don't uh, recapture the d-pawn, you play g4. And now, after knight takes g4, you don't take the knight, because that, that's good, I mean, black is sacrificing a piece, uh, but after h takes g, bishop takes g, black has some activity and annoying, and annoying pressure on f3. Uh, so, after g4, well, if, uh, if black doesn't give up a piece, then he's just going to be worse after bishop here. This just isn't good. In fact, let me see, has this ever, ever been played? No no games from this position. The engine thinks that the best move is here or, or e5. In any case, you can see that white has a huge advantage. Uh, so the best move after g4 is for black to take and for white not to take on, on g4 but to play knight takes d4, putting pressure on c6. And now after knight to f6, saving the knight, queen to a4, putting additional pressure on, on the c6 pawn, and after queen c7, knight takes c6. And this is in fact winning for white. You have tremendous pressure along the e-file, you have a tremendous pressure along this diagonal, you're threatening discovered checks with your knight, and your position is just superb. So remember that in this line, after c3, knight to f6, rook e1, bishop g4, h3, bishop h5, uh, after d4, cd4, cd4, don't take the pawn, just play knight to d7, because your your knight is better on d7, because you want to prepare f5 uh, in many positions, and uh, your knight is actually in the way on f6, so don't take, because it's losing, so knight d7, bishop e3, bishop e7, knight b to d2, now you can continue with castles and prepare the move f5, you still have a broad center, and you still have a lot of activity. Okay, uh, so these are the two more, most common variations after bishop takes c6. Uh, after knight c6, white of course doesn't have to take. I think the best move and the most active move is d4. Uh, here once again, once white plays d4, you take it. So cd4, knight d4, bishop to d7, the knight was attacked twice, castles, knight to f6, knight to c3, g6, bishop e3, white... Uh, well, continues to develop normally, and this is sort of a dragon position now by transposition, and you can use the normal dragon plans. Uh, often white is going for a simple English attack setup, with now bishop g7, f3, castles, queen to d2. This is now an English attack, and I wouldn't want to go uh, too much into that. You can see that in the, in the dragon variation uh, videos. Uh, and yeah, you can you can check that out over there. And the third option after knight to c6, and the most common one is castles. Simply uh, not taking the knight, not pushing through in the center. This is the least aggressive option, but it's actually uh, what's most commonly played. Uh, Black continues with his development. Bishop d7, uh, rook to e1, knight f6, c3, pre preparing d4, and now a6. And uh, the move c3 is very useful, not only because it prepares d4, but because now, uh, in many positions, you have to retreat to f1, or take the knight. Here you can play uh, either bishop to f1, or you can play bishop to, f to a4, and after bishop to a4, you can play the, uh, bishop to, to c2, and put pressure on the h7 pawn. So decide, bishop to f1 is uh, more defensive and sounder, I believe, and bishop to a4, b5, bishop to c2 gives you more attacking chances. The main line is bishop to f1. 
Uh, here uh, the game continues with bishop to g4, h3 chasing the bishop away, and here uh, the most common uh, move is actually to take the knight, because if you play bishop h5, bishop g6, if white decides to push through with g4, then after d3 uh, your bishop might be trapped and uh, it might be hard to, be to break through. So you take on f3, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, g6, preparing to fianchetto once again going for a dragon-like position, even though the c and the d pawns haven't been traded yet d3, bishop g7, bishop to e3, castles, knight to d2, and so on. Um, a normal attacking setup for white here, which I would say almost resembles a Roy Lopez position, uh, with a lot of maneuvering in between if black had managed to get his uh, bishop to g7, and uh, white uh, will often go for a common plan of uh, knight f1 or uh, knight f1, knight g3, or knight f1, uh, knight to e3. And go for d4. Now uh, the, the the difference is that the black bishop is on uh, g7 and not on b6 or on b7 or on or on a7. So I th I think that uh, white has even more control over this diagonal and uh, over this diagonal. Sorry. So I think the position is very good for white. And uh, as always, the engines give this as better for white. Well, half a pawn better, but still the engines always like white. So this is. Uh, what I wanted to say about the move knight to c6. So three options, either castles, takes, or d4. I think d4 is the best move and the most aggressive move because you get to open up the position, you get to put pressure on on, on black immediately, and uh, I think this is just fine. This English attack setup is what I like to play, so... But on the other hand, uh, most uh, Sicilian players might be uh, comfortable in, in these setups where white plays the English attack, so we might want to go for takes, uh, which might surprise them. So yeah, decide what you want to do. Okay, uh, the second move after bishop to b5 is knight to d7. And here, once again, uh, there are three options. W one option I would like to emphasize uh, it's actually the third most commonly played option. Uh, the first two moves are to castle and to uh, to castle and to play d4. Those are the two most common moves, and I think the best move is c3. Uh, so c3, uh, you are preparing to put your bishop away to c2 if you would want to do that in some positions. If uh, b5 is played and b5 is going to be played. And you are also preparing the move d4. I really like this Salapin idea, this c3 Sicilian idea, that um, you, you can reinforce d4, and especially after bishop b5 check, you have a place to tuck your bishop away. Here, uh, black can continue either with a6 or, or knight to f6. Knight to f6 is better. Uh, knight f6, queen e2, and now a6, bishop to a4, b5, and bishop to c2. Uh, so yeah, your bishop is perfect on this diagonal. e4 is usually your weakest pawn, because the black bishop is going to get to, to b7, so... This is the perfect place for the, for the bishop. Uh, bishop b7, castles, e6, black is developing normally, and now d4. After d4, bishop e7, rook e1, castles, knight b2, d2, queen c7, knight to f1. I think white stands great. And once again, uh, your knight is going to g3 or to e3. Once your knight gets to g3, then uh, your position is going to be great. You might even consider rook a to d1 and d5 to, to weaken the, the e5 square in this position, uh, and if black takes, takes, uh, you might weaken d5 uh, sometime, and, and you might want to consider... Uh, so yeah, after d5, if takes, takes, then your knight is going to be able to go to f5, that was what I wanted to say. So if you manage to, to get rid of the e6 pawn, then uh, the f5 square is weakened, and you might use it afterwards. And your uh, rook and queen are perfect along the e-file. So I really like this setup after pawn to c3, and there isn't really that much black can do to stop that. Now one um, important thing, which I think is one of white's biggest advantages in this line, is that white's dark squared bishop is much better than black's. And there really aren't that many prospects for the bishop on e7. So yeah, this is the, the c3 line. I'm not sure why it's not the most common. But yeah, I, I like it. I, I like uh, the C3 line the most, and this is what I prefer playing. Uh, but the most common uh, line after after knight to d7 is d4. So let's go over that. d4, opening up uh, the center immediately. Black takes. Once d4 is played, cd4. Uh, black can also play knight to f6, but they transpose. Uh, queen takes d4, a6. Uh, bishop takes d7. Bishop takes d7. Uh, once... Uh, 
Black has played the knight on, on, on d7. You don't always have to recapture, but I believe it's better to recapture because you are going to want to create the Moroxy bind with c4. And once your pawns are on c4 and on e4, your light squared bishop is usually your weakest piece, so getting rid of that will help. So bishop d7, bishop d7, and now c4. And uh, now you can see that if your bishop was on e2, uh, where it's usually situated in most Moroxy bind positions, it's actually the worst piece on the board. So now I'm happy to have traded my light squared bishop for the knight that would usually be on c6. Knight f6, bishop to g5. Uh, white can also play knight to c3, but they are going to transpose most most often. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, no, sorry. Uh, bishop to g5 uh, is a different move because... To bishop to g5, uh, black can decide not to fianchetto because uh, if black fianchettos here, then white can consider capturing and doubling uh, black's f pawns and weakening the d6 pawn. So to bishop to g5, uh, black should play, be playing e6 and bishop to e7. And if bishop to g5 is not played, is, if knight to c3 is played, then g6, bishop to g7 is the way to go. So after bishop to g5, e6, knight to c3, bishop to e7, castles, uh, bishop to c6. This is the normal setup, putting pressure on the e4 pawn. And let's say rook f to e1, castles, rook a to d1. This is, I would say, the end of the opening and all of the pieces have been developed. And if instead of bishop to g5 here, white goes for knight to c3, you can play g6. And uh, here, if, black, if white plays bishop to g5 now, then you have time for bishop to g7. That's why after g6, white castles and you play bishop to g7. And this is uh, sort of a dragon Maroxy bind position. I don't know how to describe it better. So yeah, this is the main line. This is what happens after d4. And perhaps the reason why d4 is the is the most popular move is that you get this Maroxy bind setup, which is really hard to break for, for black. And you've gotten rid of your light squared bishop. So it's very tempting to go for this. And I'm not really sure how uh, what black can do to avoid that. So d4, cd4, queen d4, uh, a6, uh, bishop takes d7, bishop d7, c4. Yeah, I'm not really sure there's much uh, black can do. So th this is one of the main advantages of the Moscow variation, in my opinion. And one of the things why I love playing it is that you usually get this setup without your bishop. And that's great. I hate having the Maroxy bind with my bishop on e2. Okay, let's go over the third most popular move. Um, after knight to d7. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the second most popular move is castles. Not playing d4... Uh, not uh, not playing c3 but castles and this might be the soundest and here uh, black has two uh, two main responses one is a6 one is knight to f6 let's go over knight to f6 first because that's sideline knight f6 rook to e1 now a6 and uh, they could transpose but they usually don't uh, bishop to f1 in this position uh, Putting the bishop on, on a4, of course, loses a piece. Never do that. Just remember this position. If, you're, if your opponent plays a6, remember that you can lose a piece easily, so just be careful. Uh, so after a6, usually bishop to f1 is the correct move. Bishop to c4 almost never is. Uh, d4. I'm sorry, b6, d4. Uh, c takes d4. Knight takes d4. Bishop to b7. And, uh, well, a few key points to remember. White is going to be playing either for the Moroxy bind or the English attack setup most often in the Moscow variation. And black is almost always going to have his bishop pointing at the e4 pawn. So remember that. And black is either going to fianchetto and have a dragon-like pawn structure or play e6 and uh, bishop to e7 and have a Scheveningen pawn structure. So these are sort of the main plans for both sides. f3, uh, e6, c4 creating the Moroxy bind, bishop e7, knight c3, castles. Bishop to e3, rook to c8, rook to c1, queen to c7, queen to d2. A fairly normal position, and this is this is what I would uh, what I was talking about earlier. You would like to have this bishop exchanged off for this knight, I believe. So yeah, in in this position, it's not really favorable to do that, but you still get a very comfortable Moroxy bind. So this, as an anti-Sicilian, avoids all the mainline theory, but gives you. Uh, most of the advantages of having the white pieces against the Sicilian. So I like the Moscow variation. So okay, that's the move knight to d7, the second most popular move. So remember that as white you can either play d4, castles, uh, or c3. And uh, 
I prefer C3, but all three moves are fine, in fact. And now let's go over the main line. Um, after bishop to b5, perhaps the most uh, natural move is to cover with the bishop. And now, if white decides to retreat the bishop, that would be a loss of tempo, so white almost always takes. So take the bishop, queen takes. Uh, you don't really want to take with the knight, even though it's a good move, but I believe that it's uh, much more natural to be controlling e5 and d4. So just uh, give yourself an option to put the knight on c6. I think that's much safer. Queen takes d7, and the queen on d7 isn't really that bad. And here, uh, white has two options. Once again, uh, I prefer the move c4. Castles is the most commonly played move. So let's go over c4 first. C4, and here uh, black has three responses. Let's just get one of them out of the way. There's a variation that Vlastimir Hort has played uh, in the 80s, 70s, 80s, which uh, I'm sure it's seldom played today, uh, but you might encounter it, and that's the move queen to g4, seemingly forking two pawns, which is not that popular today, but somebody might play it against you. Now, don't play something stupid, such as queen to e2, and then after queen takes g2, rook to g1. That's bad for, for white, just castle, and allow the black queen to capture on e4. You are going to have an almost winning position. So queen takes e4, you play d4, breaking through in the center. C takes d4, knight takes d4, knight to f6, knight to c3, and the queen is forced to, to run away. Queen to g4, offering a trade, queen to b3, declining a trade, attacking the b2 pawn, and the knight isn't hanging. If, if the black queen takes the knight, then black loses too much material, he loses the rook. So this position is just winning for white, uh, even after queen to b3, this is more than plus one, and white has given up a pawn, but this lead in development is just too much for black to handle. Of course, if you waste too much time, if you're not quick enough, if you give black a few moves to, to develop, then black is going to be fine, but the, the lead in development is worth the, the pawn sacrifice. So after the move c4, you don't have to be worried about queen to g4. Uh, the two main moves for black are either knight to c6 or knight to f6. After knight c6, uh, you play d4, breaking through in the center. You've created your monoxy bind and you just want to uh, destroy black's central control. cd4, knight d4, knight to f6, knight to c3. You're going to go for the normal monoxy bind setup with f3, castles, uh, bishop to e3, queen to d2. And we've been through this in several videos already. You should be aware of the monoxy bind setups. So g6, f3, bishop g7, bishop to e3, castles, castles. This is your normal setup. Your next moves are queen to d2, rook to c1, rook to d1, or either rook to c2, rook to c1. And remember the tricks with knight to d5. Uh, you could even go for f4. You could even go for h4, h4, h5 if black isn't careful. You could exchange the dark square bishop on, h, uh, on, on g7. So a normal monoxybine setup in which, uh, more importantly, White doesn't have his bishop stuck, stuck on e2. Uh, the second most popular move is knight to f6, which basically uh, transposes to the same position. It doesn't really matter which knight black starts with, you are going to go for the same move order. So a very um, good thing about the Moscow variation, if black goes for the main line with bishop to d7, on, on move 3 already, you can be sure that you know what to do for the next... Uh, seven moves without any issues you can play them a tempo without thinking so bishop d7 queen d7 uh, c4 and whatever black does on he can only play queen to g4 and give you a winning position but whichever knight black moves you have the same move order and you have the same maroxy bind setup you want to achieve so this is easy that's why i would recommend the move c4 after bishop d7 queen d7 uh, the most popular move is castles Perhaps because it's harder to prepare for this, there are more lines to, to consider. Uh, black can once again play knight to c6 or knight to f6. Let's go over knight to f6 first. This is a sideline. Rook e1, knight c6, c3, preparing d4, e6, d4, cd4, cd4, d5. And this would be the main line of the canal, uh, what used to be called the canal attack. Uh, the main line of the Moscow variation. This is considered to be the main main line and there are more than I think 700 Grandmaster games from this position. Uh, e5, knight to e4, knight b to d2, knight takes d2, bishop takes d2, bishop e7, rook c1, castles. And these are the features of the main line and 
If as uh, black you go for the main line with bishop to d7 and if white responds with castles which is the main line you have to be aware that you are going to have sort of a French defense pawn structure without the bishop stuck on c8 and uh, who is better here I'm not really sure the engine thinks it's completely equal which I don't think is good for white because in the positions with c4 white seems better uh, so I would just recommend you always to play c4 on move 5 instead of castles but after castles uh, if uh, black doesn't go for knight to uh, f6 which is a sideline if he plays knight to c6 you are most often going to end up in the same position so c3 knight to f6 d4 uh, d4 is not a pawn sacrifice you can you can defend your pawn with rook to e1 but that's really unnecessary if rook e1 then e6 and d4 but if you play d4 immediately and uh, black takes, which is the main move, you are going to get the pawn back. So knight e4, and now you play d5, uh, forcing the knight to go to uh, to e5. If the knight goes somewhere else, then black is just too passive. You can't really go here or, or here or here. That's just horrible. Uh, so the knight goes here, you want to trade the knight on e5, so knight takes e5, d takes e5 and rook to e1 winning your, winning your pawn back. Uh, I think this is fine for white. Once again, not as good as c4 on move 5, but playable, equal. Uh, here black continues with knight to d6 and white recaptures the pawn. And black goes for the kingside fianchetto here and wants to castle, so... Yeah, but uh, black could castle either way, but fianchettoing is a very common plan, especially because you gain a tempo on the rook. So g6, rook e1, bishop g7, and now after bishop to g5, uh, black can go for knight to f5, black can go for castle's king side, but I believe that, um, yeah, um, yeah, black has to defend the e7 pawn here. That's the problem. That's why I input this move, bishop to g5. This is not the most common move, but this is what I was thinking when analyzing the position over the board. There are normal moves like knight to d2 and trying to get the knight to f3, but bishop to g5 actually poses a question to black immediately, and uh, now black is forced to defend the e7 pawn. If he castles, then white is going to capture. If he doesn't do anything, white is going to capture. So the move knight to f5 is common here, and uh, when I was looking at this over the board, I wasn't really sure why uh, the move g4 doesn't win i guess it's because the move f6 and i couldn't really understand how knight to f5 can be playable but apparently the main move here is knight to a3 and then castles and this is still theory but let's just see uh, after knight to f5 knight a3 has been played four times in grandmaster games queen to d2 has been played several times and g4 has only play been played once and black won that game so let's see how after g4, black played h6, and white played bishop to f4. This is the game Becker, uh, Walter Becker against Friedmar Schirm. Schirm. Those are, I guess, they are Fide masters. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure black is winning here. This is equal. Black is slightly better. Let's see. Let's see if after h6... Yeah, white can't really take, so g4 doesn't work. So anyway, this this wasn't really what I wanted to show you in the video. This was just my analysis after uh, looking at some middle game positions. So yeah, bishop to g7 and, and fianchettoing your bishop is common. And if bishop to g5, I guess black shouldn't really be worried about anything but because he has knight to f5. A position slightly better for white and after knight to a3... Uh, yeah, you could castle either side. I think castling queenside is more aggressive, so I would prefer that. So this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. So a very nice anti-Sicilian position which avoids a lot of theory. You don't go into the main lines of the open Sicilian. You play bishop to b5, forcing black to decide uh, what he wants to do with, with the check. And uh, he can either block with the knight or with the bishop. Uh, three more, most common moves, in fact, three only moves. And I hope I managed to explain what to do uh, against each one. In most positions, I would recommend the Maroxi bind with c4 and playing more aggressive moves. And uh, yeah, if you want to surprise black, if you want to get black out of the mainline theory, this might be a great choice because uh, even though it's a very popular opening, I'm not sure that too many people are aware of the details in the position and I, I'm not sure that too many people are aware that it's an opening. Uh, I've actually talked to several people who weren't aware of the variation, who just mistake it for the Rosolimo, which is something completely different. So yeah, a great weapon for white. Uh, 
something to to reduce the learning time if you're just starting with e4 this might be uh, a great way to start fighting against the sicilian and i hope this helps and if you play the sicilian defense i hope this gave you something too yeah thanks very much uh thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for more chess bye bye